So here is what I asked you to do. I hope you had a little bit of time. You can see my screen, correct? So first, let's take the derivative of, what was that uh, thing there? X e to the x tangent x. So x e to the x tangent x. Yeah, this is a traveling derivative. It will be, if you want to mark on the top, uh, that first function is f, next function is g, and the other function called, let's say, k or something. So what do we get? We get the derivative of the first function. So that would be simply e to the x tangent x plus derivative of the middle function, which doesn't change, plus the derivative of the last function. Derivative of tangent is secant squared x. What do you do if you ever uh, in doubt or forget uh, what's the solution? If you forget how to, um, how to let's say, take the derivative of tangent, you just uh, make yourself, uh, you give yourself a side note, the derivative of tangent is the derivative of sine x over cosine x. And if I remember these, all I have to do is square the bottom, it's the bottom function squared. Uh, copy the bottom, take the derivative of top, subtract, and the rows are reversed. So here we would have derivative of bottom function times the top unchanged. Which is of course cosine squared plus, because derivative of cosine is minus sine, so it will be plus uh, sine squared x divided by cosine squared x, which is one over cosine squared x, which is secant squared x. That's what you do when you, uh, when you forget, especially in early stages, good? So let's look at uh, the next problem. The next problem is uh, derivative of seven x squared minus secant x plus secant cosecant. So derivative of, again, I forget, seven uh, x squared minus secant x. And did I say plus uh, secant x cosecant x? I feel like after a stroke, I don't remember anything. So we have this uh, function that we're thinking is derivative. And uh, what is that? Derivative of seven x squared is 14 x. Derivative of secant, if you remember, it's minus, also well, because there's a minus here, it's gonna be secant x tangent x. This you, if, whenever you forget, you just uh, do it uh, from scratch and then uh, plus, and this necessitates product rule. So the derivative of first function is uh, secant x tangent x times cosecant x plus secant x and in parentheses derivative of cosecant is minus cosecant x cotangent x. 
and uh, we can let it be. Okay. I hope it's all clear. Any questions before I move on? I, uh, and, and you solve the other exercises uh, uh, similarly. So the last exercise I ask you to solve is derivative of cosine times tangent divided by ex uh, 5x squared. So that will involve uh, what operation? So I think cosine tangent, I said, quotient rule is the first uh, thing, yes, divided by, uh, on the bottom it was five, it was that five uh, x squared plus e to the x. So we are taking the derivative of that expression. And uh, uh, this is quotient rule, so I square the denominator. And uh, I copy the denominator without modifying it. And um, the derivative of the numerator involves uh, product rule. I will do it in a moment. I can just first uh, indicate that I will have to take its derivative for later. Yeah, so I put a prime there. And uh, there I subtract and the rows are reversed. So it's a uh, derivative of, uh, of first function times the second function without changing it. I'm not gonna copy so that I'm not running out of room. So what do I have here? So it's uh, five X squared plus E to the X multiplied by, <clears throat> this is now product rule. Derivative of cosine is minus sine X times tangent X plus derivative of <clears throat> plus cosine <clears throat> tangent, uh, sorry, secant squared. Derivative of uh, tangent is secant squared. minus uh, derivative of, uh, uh, of 5x squared plus e to the x is simply 10x plus e to the x multiplied by, um, by this function. I'll just indicate what it is because I don't want to copy it here, right? And uh, divided by If I want to do something with this function afterwards, I might uh, modify or continue solving it. But uh, again, I indicated that I understand, uh, I understand quotient rule, good. So um, let's go and consider. Any questions before I move on, by the way, guys, uh, everything clear? Please confirm you kind of followed more or less so you understood the idea. So write yes, perhaps, or something like that. So I know. Your, your, your hands are on the trigger. All right. Now here is um, my next question, guys. It, 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 so um, we have talked about, uh, about this, right? We have talked about the previous class, I believe. We talked about limit as h goes to zero of sine h divided by h, correct? Now, h and h are measured in radians, right? What we have here is essentially this picture. So 
if it, what, what, what we have is we have this uh, radius. The radius uh, can be always measured in one. So when I say one radius, I'm saying that uh, um, on the X and Y axis, I measure everything in terms of uh, radian length. And uh, then the sine is this length. Okay, and that's my sine. That's sine of H. And where do I see H? H is right over here. You understand? So if I measure everything in radians, I'm comparing the arc of this slice with uh, this uh, red vertical bar. And the cosine, of course, is here. That would be cosine H. Yes? So <clears throat> what I expect, I will possibly talk about it a little bit more sine h over h, I expect it to approach one because uh, when, when h is very small, when this uh, region, this is my h again, this is h guys. When h is very small, this vertical length and this arc are very similar. You see this, uh, this arc is like uh, the vertical length of the triangle. That's what happens here. Do you follow? I'll show you actually right now. Um, I'll remind you of this animation. Here. Let's look at the stationary circle, guys. You see what happened over here? Uh, this is the arc and I laid it flat on the x-axis. The arc is of right now of length 0 0.217. Do you see it? 0 0.217 uh, is the length of uh, this arc segment. And look at sine, it's almost the same length. If I open it a bit more, difference becomes a bit more apparent. You see, so, so here is a sine, this is sine or this is sine, right? It's same thing, right? I just placed it, uh, this is unfolded circumference. I placed it on the x-axis and, and uh, at the right angle, I placed uh, the altitude here. But really I'm comparing this dark blue region with this red region. Look at the number, 0 0.518, 0 0.495. So the bigger is the angle, the more is the difference, right? But if the angle is very small, look at that. If the angle is very small, sine and theta are almost the same. This length and, and uh, this arc are almost the same. So before I move on, guys, is, is my explanation clear thus far? You understand why, uh, uh, why that is happening? You understand why I think that uh, a sine uh, of h divided by h is one? because a sine of h is going to be essentially like h. They're gonna be of the same length. If you understand, you see, it, it also matters that it's in radians. Sine of h is the, uh, is the vertical red length measured in radius. And the, in h, the arc of the slice is also measured in radius. So if you have sine of h degrees divided by h, you should not expect the answer to be equal to one. Right, because here we are comparing vertical length in radius units to the length of the arc in radius units. Now, if you understand another question, uh, which is bigger uh, if, if H is positive, is sine of H uh, or H bigger? So yes, good. So sine of H over H is always a fraction slightly less than one, good? So we expect this limit to be equal to one and uh, uh, over here, guys, I'll use another color. Over here, this is uh, one minus uh, cosine H. Yes, one minus cosine H compared to H. So it's like we have this, uh, this other right triangle here uh, that makes uh, H as it's kind of hypotenuse. It's almost like the hypotenuse here, right? So if, uh, if those two things become the same, then this length, is going to be comparatively very small. It's gonna be zero by comparison, right? So because this squared plus uh, zero squared is equal to H squared. So we're expecting that uh, this thing will approach 
zero. All right. We have we'll have a, a more formal proof of it, perhaps, but I would like you to see uh, what's the situation. So limit as h goes to zero of cosine h minus one divided by h, we expect it to approach zero. Again, do you see why? Because if I look at this uh, at this region, let me draw another copy of it here. I am expecting to see this, guys. Here is uh, that region here. And then we have and then we have this uh, uh, sine part. Okay, so this is sine h. This is this is uh, one minus cosine h, and this thing, which I'm I'm going to pretend it's straight, it's uh, essentially h, right? So we are thinking that. Uh, that sine h and h are almost the same, which makes the other side uh, essentially zero. So that's why uh, one minus cosine h divided by h by comparison to h is essentially zero. Uh, are you with me? Because when, when, when the angle is very small, then h is essentially like sine h, right? h and sine h are equal, which means uh, to make a Pythagorean theorem, I have to square this and make it zero. So uh, sine squared plus zero squared equals to h squared, but, but sine h is already like h. So this, this is essentially zero. One other simple uh, question is uh, cosine h minus one, is it uh, positive or negative? Cosine h minus one over h, if h is uh, in the positive direction, uh, counterclockwise, is this quantity, uh, before I take the limit, is it, is it like uh, zero minus or zero plus, please? Is it uh, smaller than zero or bigger than zero in this orientation? <clears throat> oh, don't answer all at once, please. Cosine h minus one, is it positive or negative? When h is uh, like I drew in the picture in the in the positive sense of the angle. But cosine h is here, guys, uh, and uh, here is one. So one minus cosine h is this segment, but here in the limit it's cosine h minus one. So it would be negative, right? It doesn't matter. You see, if, if this is zero multiplied by minus one, it still will be zero. But cosine h minus one, cosine is smaller than one, even without a picture, right? So uh, it becomes closer to zero, but if h is positive, cosine h minus one divided by h is a negative uh, quantity always, but very close to zero. Here, notice I drew one minus cosine. This is one minus cosine. This is the minus of it. Are you with me? Now, why would I even remember such limits? So uh, guys, uh, what when somebody writes limit as h goes to zero of sine h divided by h, uh, where one is going with it? What is one doing? You understand my question? What is one really doing? Where are you are you going? Right. So when I when when you're on when you're outside and I ask you what are you doing, you're not saying I'm moving my feet. You might say I'm going to the store, or I'm going to class. Uh, well, that's actually where you're approaching. But what is uh, what, what is the cause of doing it? What is somebody actually trying to find out? when you take limit as h goes to zero, sine h over h. What do you recognize? Perhaps, but, uh, uh, but you see, uh, why, would you, why would you consider this quantity to begin with? What are you trying to find?
It's all a matter of recognition, guys. Again, let, you see, you, you, you don't, um, under, you see strategy, right? You, you are not just walking about, you have a direction. You do something for a purpose. So the purpose of such a limit is to do what? Look at it again. It's limit as H going to zero of sine, let me help you here, zero plus H minus sine of zero, which just happens to be equal to zero divided by h what is a person doing do you see it now better or not what's the goal here what is this thing this thing is, is something that you should uh, immediately react to and recognize. What is this thing? You are not doing enough exercises at all. This is what we are occupying ourselves all the time with. This is, well, not, this is not sine of zero. Sine of zero is equal to zero. Miami, call, uh, the answer will be one, but, but um, you see the answer is not as important as understanding what uh, is somebody writing here. What's the meaning of it? This is the derivative of sine of x, where x equal to zero. If you realize, if you recognize what are, what are goals and how those goals are described, you can solve many calculus problems instantly, right? The derivative of sine x at x equal to zero. That's why I said, watch the video, what in hell are we doing? One thing we are practicing is to recognize what problem is somebody trying to solve. Because if you understand uh, where somebody is moving, you can uh, go around about way. You, you don't have to follow the same pathway, you understand? So if you're saying, I'm moving along this road, there is, you, you do not think that you can take another shorter route to the solution. You have to understand what somebody is trying to accomplish. This is the definition of the derivative at zero using that second formula, right? So uh, if I were to know the derivative of sine, that simply is cosine of zero, which is equal to one. Now, similar question. If I write limit as h goes to zero of cosine h minus one divided by h, why would you think of such a um, limit? This is simply the limit as h goes to zero of cosine of zero plus h minus cosine of zero divided by h, which is the derivative of cosine x, where x equals to zero, and that's minus sine, if I remember, of course, minus sine of zero, which is zero. Okay, so the what uh, you are doing is uh, what goal is somebody trying to achieve? Somebody here, when I look at it, I think someone is trying to find the derivative of cosine at zero by definition. And since I know what the person is trying to do, I can find another route to carry out this operation. So for example, let me ask you, uh, what is somebody doing here? So limit as h goes to zero of uh, of the cube root of eight plus h minus two divided by h. Suppose you were given this problem on the exam. You have to find this limit. What, what, what would you have done? There is a very simple thing to do here if you understand what somebody was trying to do here. So in the comments, as quickly as you possibly can, would you please tell me what is somebody doing in this problem? In other words, this, this description is that somebody is trying to get to a goal. And if you recognize what that goal is, you can possibly select a different strategy. Evidently, you are not opening enough uh, calculus books. 
but the derivative uh, Lakey of the cube root of eight is zero. So you mean uh, finding the derivative of what and where? Maybe your idea is right, but what you wrote isn't completely right. So I have this uh, thought bubble and I right away see somebody is finding the derivative of what function? Well, fx and g, but, but uh, that's vague. What is f, what is g? F finding the derivative of what function? Oh, yes, Miamiko, you hear one person understands. The derivative of the cube root of x where x is eight. And now I don't have to go through the algebra. What do I get? I simply know that this limit is uh, the derivative of x to the one third, evaluated at x equal to eight which is simply one third eight to the power of minus two thirds. So that would be simply one over 12. You understand? Without doing any algebra, I can right away know the answer is one over 12. Now, what I want to teach you is, uh, and that's what with the video I sent that not enough of you have watched, It's that when I do derivative of some function f of x, what I will see is uh, this type of limit sometimes, right? So it's limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And I do not see an h here at all, right? What I see is this. Uh, I see that there is a perturbation and that perturbation is on the denominator. In other words, it's something that goes to zero. It's a, it's a, in the function, I see a number plus the impurity plus something that disappears. And here I see the number and here I see the impurity again. That's the pattern. So if you understand this idea, you can solve many problems very rapidly. So tell me please, for example, what is limit as x goes to zero of sine, let me actually uh, make it still, I'm not sure why people have problems with it, but I'll keep it still using the same letter. H sine of five H divided by H. What is the limit equal to now? No, no takers. Yes, finally, a few people see it's five. Why is it five? Because here is what you do. You have this Terminator vision. Have you seen the movie Terminator? So you identify this is what's going to zero. And uh, uh, well, can I take five out? Which, which, where, which five can I take out? I'm sorry.
Yeah, so then in the, in the Terminator, remember, it's a sin, a mortal sin to imagine that it's sine multiplied by five multiplied by h. It's inside of the function, right? So I put a box here. I want to see the same thing in numerator and denominator. Then I know the answer is, if I put a five here, now the answer is one. But I introduced a term I never had uh, before, right? So I correct for it and I multiply the entire thing by five. So it's times five, okay? That's how I know the limit is equal to five. Again, here it is. It's something that if you understand, many problems look uh, exactly alike. So uh, here is what happened here. You see this box? It's five. Now, if I were to do the same thing with uh, uh, six H divided by three H, then I can factor out the three and introduce the six here. You see that? So that sign of a box, this is the H, there's no H at all. It's just, it's just something that vanishes to zero divided by same thing will be one. So I just uh, make uh, what's inside of sign identical to what I see in the denominator. So it's two times one, okay? Uh, now, if I had um, H squared, so what I want is H squared on the bottom. So I multiply by H and divide by H. And so this is one and this limit of H is zero. On the other hand, if I have H squared on the denominator, it's like one over H times sine H over H, which will be one times plus or minus infinity, depending on where you approach. Now, here is another question, guys. Let's see how, how good you are at uh, this recognition. It's the first thing you need to develop. I think, uh, let me see, somebody yesterday actually wrote this to me. Ah, it's in German, uh, but uh, I'll <laughs> try to, I forgot it was in German. So uh, he wrote um, that Oswald Sprenger said uh, the, the means uh, to recognize dead, the means to recognize dead expressions is the mathematical law. Das Mittel tote Formen zu erkennen ist das mathematische Gesetz. So, uh, the, so in, I remembered it. I thought it's in English, actually, <laughs> but uh, I remembered it because uh, what you are what you are doing here is recognizing the form. So take limit as x goes to infinity of x times sine of one over x. Do you recognize what this limit is? Tell me in your comments, please. What is this limit? Okay, two people. Now, why is it uh, one? Look what I can do. What's inside of sine goes to zero. So I can write this as limit where X goes to infinity of sine of one over X divided by one over X. You see? Look at it. It's the same thing that goes to zero. The answer is therefore one. Do you see that? There is nothing, it has nothing to do with what X is doing. It's just, I see that this expression and that expression are the same. 
and they are each going to zero. That's how I know the answer is indeed one. Isn't it cool? All right, here is another uh, question. So what about limit as t goes to zero of cosine t minus one divided by sine t, what is that? Okay, two people answered. What about the rest? 32 people here. Come on, guys, you can do it. I hope. Three people now, four. So let's do it uh, together. Look at it guys, look what happens. So this is limit as t goes to zero. What do I want to see on the bottom? I want to see a t. So I, I write what I want to have. So it's t cosine of t minus one. I wanted to have a t here, now this is zero. But uh, since I introduced the t, I have to m multiply it out. So we have this expression. Now, this goes to one, and this goes to zero. So the answer is uh, zero times one, which is zero. Okay, so we, we, we know that the answer has to be indeed as we predicted. Here is another one I kind of uh, need to move. So sine of x squared minus two x plus one. I simply organize it. It's uh, x minus one squared over x minus one. And then uh, I need to do the following, right? I need a uh, square on the denominator. So I multiply denominator by x minus one and numerator by x minus one. Now this is one multiplied by zero. So the answer is zero, okay? Are you with me? So I kind of uh, went through this example rapidly because I'm trying to get ahead. I need to finish quite a lot of material. But you understand how I uh, figured it out? Here is one more question. What about this guys? Uh, what about limit as theta goes to zero? as theta goes to zero of sine of six theta divided by sine of three theta. All right, uh, so lots of you um, got the answer. 
Okay, more and more people. Thank you, Edwin. Now, I do not see, uh, I don't see, don't see what you are writing. I mean, I just see your solution. Here is, uh, what do you think about uh, this uh, strategy, guys, right? So here is how uh, many people solve it. So they say, uh-huh, we have sign and sign over here. So let's cross it out. Sign and sign are crossed out. And uh, we can also cross out uh, theta, yes? So the answer is simply because of it, six over three. And then of course uh, it is two. So how many of you solved it uh, like I just showed? Irvin did, uh, who else did? Edwin uh, did. Okay, another person did. Yuzo. And uh, who else? It's okay, I can't bite. I'm too far. Tell me, Steven. Me too, Zakia. I did. Same here. Uh, so I thought. Now, let me tell you what the solution entails. If you solved it like this, you solved it pretty much like an old lady that tumbled down the stairs and became young and healthy. That's pretty much uh, what it means. The, uh, doing this is entirely incorrect, but the solution is right. So it, it's, it's so incorrect that, that the solution ends up being correct. It is not a multiplication. No, that's not what happened here. So here is uh, method one. Here is what actually happens here. Why does it work? Method one of solving this is that I have a sine of six theta and I want a correction here. You see what I'll introduce is uh, a correction. So we have sine of theta and here we have a sine of uh, three theta. Now what I can do What I can do is I can, uh, I can write theta here and theta here. Now this is what? Uh, so this now is six and this is one third. You understand? Why is this uh, six? Because here I can put uh, a six that it needs and therefore I multiply by six. And here it needs a three. So I put a three and uh, divide by three. So then uh, what do you do? Then you know that this part goes to one, whereas this part also goes to one. And you are left with six times one third. You do not multiply sign. It is, it is a terrible uh, misunderstanding of trigonometry if you think it's multiplication here or that you can factor something out. It means that all this effort has not paid off. I hope you, are not, you don't want that to happen. So another way to think of it, which is I think is faster, is to realize uh, that if uh, sine of an angle over uh, that is essentially equal to one, and then to say that sine of uh, this thing is essentially the same thing as this thing. Sine is not really doing anything in, in the limit. So what I think uh, mostly is that when I see sine of six theta divided by, uh, by three theta, what I see is essentially the same by sine of three theta, let's say it. Essentially, because theta is small, sine is not doing anything. So it's as if it's not there. So it's six theta divided by three theta, which is, uh, uh, which is six over three. But only because, not because I canceled anything algebraically, it's just the observation that if the angle is small, then uh, a sign of that angle will be the same as, uh, uh, as the angle. Speaking of which, uh, please calculate, that's a good example, please calculate what is limit as h goes to zero of sine of, of uh, um, what is it, of uh, h degrees divided by h. Can you figure that one out? 
Now it's the same limit, but si but we have uh, h degrees. If it will make your life easier, I can show you a cut. Let me know if you want to see one. Okay. You almost crushed my eye out yesterday. You got my clothes right over here. So a lot of you say one, it's a sign of uh, H degrees divided by H. That's a good, uh, good question because uh, that shows me if you understand uh, what's going on guys. Sign of H degrees, what is sign supposed to measure? Wh why is sign H over H one? It's because uh, uh, sine of h is what? It, no matter if degrees or, or uh, radians, it measures uh, this red rope segment, the vertical segment in uh, terms of the radius units in radians. Look what happens because you're not solving problems correctly. You see what happens? The cat turned black from, uh, from that situation. You don't answer questions correctly. The cat changes colors. All right, so let's do this question. Like in that song, you know, uh, I want to paint it black. I see a rainbow and I want to paint it black because I see you don't answer it correctly. So here is uh, the observation. H degrees is how many radians? So let's say uh, one degree is pi over 180, correct? One degree is pi over 180 radians. So H uh, degrees is pi over 180 H. So this is the same as limit as H goes to zero of sine of pi over 180 H divided by H. And so the answer is pi divided by 180 which is definitely not one, it's much smaller. Yes, it's pi over 180. Do you follow? And here is, uh, yeah, so we, again, uh, that should not have been surprising to any of you. If you, you see, you have to think simply and efficiently. What is sine? Sine is the length of the arc in radians. Do you see, look at it. Why, uh, why do we, here is, here is the radians and here is a uh, sign. You see, they're fairly similar still, right? For uh, 0 0.46 and 0 0.44. What, why is the similarity? It's because this red rope measured in radius units, you see this is one half radius. And this blue arc are almost the same length. You see this blue arc, here I laid it flat on the x-axis and the red line uh, are almost the same. You see here is that same arc on the circle. Do you see that? Here I'll push it. And, and then of course, as I move farther, the similarity stops uh, being so similar, right? Still there is some similarity, you see? This blue arc here, I laid it on the x-axis to measure its length. 
its length is fairly similar to the red length here. That's why a sine R and, and this arc are of the same length. That's why sine of H over H is equal to one in the limit is because if the angle is small, the blue arc and the, and the red line are very similar. But as I make the angle larger, you see the difference becomes more and more significant. Good? It becomes more and more significant. You see now the, uh, the angle is 2.201, but uh, this length here is 81%, uh, uh, about 81% of, of the radius. Good? So here I would like you to tell me what is now the limit as H goes to zero of sine of, uh, of three H degrees divided by sine of, uh, of six H in, ra in radians. So calculate uh, this quantity. I will be right uh, back with you. I'll be, I'll return in a moment. Okay. I'm back. So what's the answer? Okay, let's see what we have here. So what you have 
Okay, let's see. So H degrees is, uh, let's, let's, let's just make the conversion. Three H degrees is three times pi divided by 180H, right? So what I have is when I, when I, when I have this number three pi over 180H divided by six H, so it's going to be uh, pi over, um, what is it? Pi over uh, two, two, 2360. Yes, so the answer is going to be that this is pi over 360. I hope you understand. Pi over 360, this is uh, here, uh, H without the degrees. All right, let's get uh, back to the lecture. Here again, guys, right? So uh, it's not cancellation. What happens to the six? You see it? Um, so everybody can see my uh, whiteboard, correct? So, um, okay. So what happened here is, uh, is, uh, is this, is, th is that I have three times, times pi over 180H divided by six. So I, took three and six, I simplified, it's now divided by two. So it's pi over 180 divided by two, which is multiplied by one half, which is 360. Well, I mean, I'm sure they have to simplify it. I just wrote uh, this pi over 360. Just I'll, It's basically arithmetics, guys. Three over six, it's one half. One half times pi over 180 is uh, pi over 360, good? All right, let's continue. So again, this is entirely incorrect, uh, canceling it out, but this is the idea that uh, we can use here. Sine of six theta is going to be indistinguishable from six theta. That's what it means uh, for the limit to equal one, is that numerator and denominator are uh, indistinguishable, right? And uh, the ratio is one. So this is like six uh, theta over three theta, but I have not uh, canceled sign. It's meaningless to say cancel sign. It's this that I'm using. Okay. Now, if you understand, let's see, uh, let's see this question, guys. Tell me please, what is the limit as X goes to zero and you can do it in a second of tangent X divided by X, please. Okay, uh, two people answered. Why is it, uh, okay, four people, go on. Why is that one? Let's look at it carefully, guys. What is this limit? When Usually when the answer in calculus is not immediate, you think right away the D word, the derivative. Yes, so what you think is that, what is this? I, I can convert the limit to H if you don't like it. So it's limit as H going to zero of tangent H divided by H. You see that uh, I haven't changed anything. It's just a dummy variable. It just means tangent is eating up values in radians, I suppose, uh, that are of small size and I divide by the same thing. So what is this? This is limit as h goes to zero of tangent of zero plus h minus tangent zero. Remember tangent of zero is zero divided by h. So that simply is the derivative of tangent x where x equals to one, sorry, x equals to zero, which is secant squared of zero which is one. 
You understand? So I recognize that uh, by uh, writing this limit, somebody is finding the derivative of tangent. If I recognize that I don't have to go through algebra or other ideas, I can just right away uh, go to a shortcut. That's the point. So I'm not teaching you definition just so that you always keep uh, applying the definition. But so if you understand it, it's very quickly uh, clear to you. All right, what about this limit, guys? The last one, limit as x goes to infinity, x times sine of uh, five over x. What is that value? This one. All right, so uh, Yuzu, you, you have an answer for it? Okay, what, what about the rest? What would you do the rest say? What is this limit? Okay, okay, good, three people. What else? I only have uh, three answers, you have 30 people. Okay, five answers. What about the rest? Okay, good. So the answer is uh, here is how you figure it out. Very simply, look at it, it's sine five over X divided by something over x. I want it to be five. If I put a five here, I need to multiply by five. So the answer is simply five. You understood what I, what I did? It was one, if I multiply by x, it's like dividing by one over x. But then I can write it as five and then multiply by five to balance. Okay, no trouble. Make sense? What about uh, this limit, guys? How quickly can you do this one? Limit as theta goes to zero of sine of five theta times sine of two theta divided by theta squared, what is this limit? Okay, I have two people. What about the rest? Okay, thank you. Four people. Okay, a few people are hopefully getting it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hopefully six people are getting it. 
hopefully, right? In other words, I'm hoping you're not just looking into my solutions and you're, you, you actually are figuring it out. All right, so what you can do is very simply, uh, when the angle is small, five theta is small, so sine doesn't do much. So this is the same as limit where theta goes to zero of five theta times two theta divided by theta squared. Notice I did not do algebra, I just realized that sine of five theta, the vertical red segment is the same length as the arc of the circle. So it's gonna be five theta times two theta essentially. So then uh, what do I get here? I get here simply thetas can now be crossed out and it's really 10. What would you have said if I asked you the limit as theta is going to zero of sine of three theta times tangent of two theta divided by theta squared, what would you have said in this case? Okay, one person, another. Yes, yes. So again, I do not cross anything out, but sine and tangent are not doing much when the angle is small, yes? Tangent and sine are not doing much, so the answer is uh, six. Because I can imagine sine and tangent are just not there. The angle is small, the, this is the vertical line of one triangle, this is uh, the vertical line of another triangle. Uh, I drew them in, um, so again, guys, uh, uh, how does this look? You can see it geometrically, you can see it algebraically. So if the angle is very small, very small angle means uh, that this arc is like this arc. There is not much difference between them. So this, this, this red line is the same length as this, uh, um, crust of the pizza. And uh, where do I see, uh, where do I see tangent? So tangent would have been uh, uh, this thing here. So that's tangent. That's tangent H is this orange length. This red uh, length is sine H, yes? So they are essentially, all three are essentially of the same uh, length. That's what, uh, what we realize in the limit, right? As I make the small, this arc and this orange uh, segment are uh, the same length. All right, so. What else do we have here? So there are, there are a bunch of uh, other questions like this that uh, if you want, we can practice uh, in class. Here is uh, one that I wonder, can you solve it? One plus sine theta to the one over theta. That's the last question with which I uh, will end the lecture. Can you figure this one out? One plus sine theta to the power of one over theta as theta goes to zero, what's the limit? Does it remind you of anything? That's very good, Ibad. What about the rest of you? You see, it's a, it's a matter of recognition. Beautiful, Kirill. 
Exactly. So guys, uh, my time is essentially over. If you feel that you have to run to class, certainly you can log out. But uh, if you want to stay with me, I will finish with this problem. Good, Irvin. Oh, just today, but uh, okay, go ahead, go vote. Thank you, bud. So you see this problem, guys? What is the limit equal to, please? If you're staying here still to see, to see the solution. Okay, good. Look at this thing, guys. Uh, what is E really that you should recognize? If you see one plus something small, to the power of one over that something small, you recognize this as uh, E. That's exactly what E will be like. Okay, so they have to be the same thing. Now, sine of theta is really the same as theta uh, when the angle is very small. So what you are seeing here is nothing other than the exponential. I hope that you haven't forgotten how to derive E. So if I, if, if I asked you, what does E equal to? You'll be able to say, well, it's equal to one plus one plus one half plus one over six plus blah, 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 right? So you realize how to get uh, E as I taught you that and spend quite a lot of time. Well, if you don't have any more questions, uh, uh, I, the class is over for today. And uh, if you want to stay for office hours, we can discuss some more problems. I will stop recording.